Have you ever wondered how often people are judged by appearances alone? What happens when authority figures act unfairly, thinking no one is watching? And what if the person being humiliated is not just anyone, but someone with the power to change everything? In today's video, you'll witness a story filled with unexpected twists and uncomfortable truths. It starts with a routine traffic stop, where a man gets pulled over for no apparent reason. But the officers have no idea they are humiliating the new state police chief. Why do incidents like this still happen in today's world? How many times have people been treated unfairly because of the way they look or the assumptions others make? And what lessons can this story teach us all about respect and accountability? Stick with us till the end, because we're diving into the surprising events that unfold and the lesson that left everyone speechless. Tease what's to come and build curiosity. This is more than just a case of mistaken identity. It's a powerful reminder that no one is above the law and no one is beneath human decency. The moment these officers discover the truth about the man they stopped will shock you. But it's not just about their reaction. It's about the deeper conversation this moment sparks. In this video, we'll break down. Asterisk how small actions reveal deep-rooted biases. Asterisk, the shocking reason why the new police chief kept quiet at first. Asterisk, and the powerful message that unfolded when the truth finally came out. This isn't just another viral encounter. It's a story with valuable lessons about authority, respect, and the impact of judgment. If you've ever wondered what goes through the minds of people in power or how split-second assumptions can have lasting consequences, this is a video you can't afford to miss. There's more to this encounter than meets the eye. And by the end of this video, you'll walk away with a fresh perspective on respect, fairness, and how easily authority can be misused. The final moments will make you think twice about judging someone based on appearances. So stay with us as we dive into the full story, from humiliation to redemption, and uncover the lessons hidden within this unexpected confrontation. Are you ready to find out what happened on that road and what we can all learn from it? Let's get started. It was a regular weekday afternoon and traffic flowed steadily on a rural highway. The sun hung low in the sky, casting long shadows over the road. A dark sedan cruised along the lane, drawing little attention, until flashing blue lights appeared in the rearview mirror. The driver, a middle-aged black man dressed casually, calmly pulled over to the side. Little did anyone know, this was no ordinary stop, and the events that followed would take a shocking turn. The two officers stepped out of their patrol car, walking toward the man's vehicle with the kind of swagger that spoke of authority. The younger officer adjusted his belt, trying to appear in control, while the older one wore a look of impatience, as if dealing with traffic stops was beneath him. As they approached the driver's window, tension filled the air. You could almost feel the silent assumptions being made before a single word was spoken. From the moment the man rolled down his window, it was clear that the officers had decided who he was, or rather, who they thought he was. No license plate irregularities, no speeding. Just a man they believed didn't belong in that part of town. Where are you headed? The older officer asked, his tone sharp and dismissive. Before the driver could answer, the younger officer leaned in. Step out of the car. We need to check some things. There was no respect, no explanation just in order. The man didn't resist, didn't argue. He slowly unbuckled his seatbelt, opened the door, and stepped onto the dusty shoulder of the road. His calm demeanor seemed to irritate the officers even more. The younger one exchanged a glance with his partner, as if to say, why isn't he afraid? The man, standing quietly with his hands at his sides, was no threat. But the officers had already made up their minds. Hands where we can see them. One officer barked. The man complied without complaint, though there was a quiet confidence in his movements, almost like he knew something the officers didn't. The two cops began searching his vehicle, tossing his belongings around as if they were hunting for evidence to justify their actions. They didn't find anything suspicious, not even a minor infraction, but that only seemed to fuel their frustration. 
This was no longer a routine check. It had turned into a power play. One officer pulled out his radio, reporting the stop as if something significant was about to unfold. The other stood glaring at the man, tapping his fingers on his holstered gun. The atmosphere felt heavy, charged with unspoken tension, as if they were daring the man to make a wrong move. But he didn't. He simply stood there, calm and composed, as if he had nothing to prove. At this moment, the officers were convinced they had the upper hand. They didn't know that the man standing before them was not only familiar with the law. He enforced it at the highest level. The officers, so focused on asserting control, were blind to the truth. Each passing second was setting the stage for a revelation that would flip the script entirely. They had misjudged him, and soon they would realize just how badly. The man's silence wasn't fear. It was patience. He was waiting for the right moment, knowing that when the truth came out, it would speak louder than any protest. And with every arrogant remark, every unnecessary order, the officers were digging themselves deeper into trouble they didn't even know existed. The older officer stood with crossed arms, his eyes narrowing as if trying to spot some hidden flaw in the man's composure. The younger one circled the vehicle, sneering at the neatly packed items in the trunk, tossing things around carelessly. There was no urgency, no concern for rules, only arrogance. What's a guy like you doing out here? One of them muttered under his breath, the words dripping with suspicion. The man, still standing by the side of the road, answered their questions politely but briefly, knowing that nothing he said would change the way they saw him. His calm demeanor only seemed to irritate them further. To the officers, his politeness wasn't a sign of respect. It felt like defiance. Do you think this is some kind of joke? The younger officer snapped, leaning closer, trying to rattle the man. But the man didn't flinch. His hand stayed visible, his voice steady, as if he knew exactly where this was headed. The older cop decided to escalate things. Search him, he said, gesturing with a nod. The younger officer wasted no time. He patted the man down, rougher than necessary, as if looking for an excuse to find something, anything, that would justify this unnecessary stop. But there was nothing. No hidden weapon, no illegal item. Just a wallet, a phone, and a few personal items that spoke of a life far more ordinary than they had expected. The man watched silently as his wallet was taken and flipped open with little regard for privacy. His driver's license was pulled out and inspected. The officer smirked, likely expecting the name of someone insignificant. But as his eyes scanned the words on the card, the smirk faded, replaced by confusion. He looked at the photo on the license, then back at the man, and his expression tightened. It didn't make sense. Why would someone like this be out here, alone, in a plain car? The officers exchanged uneasy glances, Something wasn't adding up, but they couldn't figure out what. They had assumed from the start that this was just another routine stop, an everyday interaction with someone they thought had no power. But cracks were starting to form in that assumption. The younger officer handed back the wallet, his confidence faltering for the first time. Then came the subtle shift. The man, still standing tall and quiet, tilted his head slightly and gave them a look not aggressive, but knowing. It was the kind of look that hinted at secrets they weren't prepared for, the kind that makes you second-guess everything. Is there a problem, officers? He asked, his voice steady and deliberate. It wasn't a question looking for an answer. It was more like a warning. A cold realization began to settle over them. They could feel it in the pit of their stomachs, that creeping sense of having stepped into something far bigger than they'd realized. But it was too late to backtrack. The officers tried to keep their cool, acting as if nothing was wrong, but the tension in the air had shifted. The man hadn't raised his voice once, hadn't argued or resisted. And yet, they felt like they were losing control of the situation, inch by inch. Every second they stood there, fumbling for words, only made it worse. They had pushed too far, and now, they were teetering on the edge of a revelation that would turn everything upside down. 
The younger officer clenched his jaw, sensing that things were slipping through his fingers. He shot a glance at his partner, silently asking, What do we do now? But there was no clear answer. The power dynamic they thought they had was gone, evaporated the moment the man gave them that knowing look. And still, the man said nothing more. He just stood there, waiting, as if daring them to realize the full weight of their mistake. Just as the officers thought they had things under control, the man calmly reached into his pocket and pulled out a business card. The officers tensed, watching his every move, expecting trouble. But what he handed over wasn't a license, badge, or permit. It was something far more powerful. The older officer took the card and read it, his eyes narrowing at first. Then, slowly, the color drained from his face. His jaw tightened, and his hand almost shook as he handed it over to his partner. State Police Chief, the younger officer whispered under his breath, disbelief written all over his face. He scanned the name on the card again, as if hoping he had misread it. But there it was, printed clearly. The man they had treated with so much disrespect was not only their superior, he was the new chief, the one recently appointed to lead the state police force. A mixture of panic and regret swept over the officers like a tidal wave. For a brief moment, silence hung heavy between them, thick with realization. The power dynamic flipped in an instant, and they both knew it. Their faces betrayed them, shifting from arrogance to shock, and finally to something closer to fear. This was no longer just a traffic stop gone wrong. It was a career-ending disaster waiting to unfold. They had humiliated the man responsible for shaping the very policies they were meant to follow. And now there was no undoing what had been done. The man remained calm, his expression unreadable. He hadn't yelled or threatened them, and that only made things worse. His silence felt like judgment. The officers knew that in this line of work, actions spoke louder than words, and the chief's quiet demeanor was louder than any reprimand. I wondered how my officers treat people on the road. The chief said softly, his voice calm but sharp as a knife. Now I know. His words cut through the tension like glass breaking, and the weight of what he was implying hit them hard. This wasn't just about their behavior toward him. It was a reflection of how they treated people every day. The officers' minds raced. How many other encounters like this had gone unnoticed, unreported? How many times had they gotten away with it before meeting someone with the power to hold them accountable? The younger officer opened his mouth, fumbling for an apology. But the words wouldn't come. What could he say to undo what had already happened? Nothing. And the worst part was that they both knew it. The chief watched them for a moment longer, as if giving them a chance to realize the full extent of their mistake. It wasn't just their jobs that were at risk now. It was their reputations, their careers, their futures. The realization hit them like a punch to the gut. If this incident got out, there would be no saving face. The headlines would write themselves. Officers humiliate new state police chief on roadside stop. It would be the kind of scandal that follows a person for the rest of their life. And there was no escaping it. The two officers stood there, paralyzed with guilt and fear, as the chief slipped his card back into his pocket. He didn't need to say anything else. The damage was already done, and they both knew it. What came next would depend entirely on the chief, and neither of them had any control over the outcome. The weight of that realization settled heavily on their shoulders. The officers stood frozen, hearts pounding as the chief stepped away from the car, leaving them to stew in the silence. The reality of what had just happened hit them hard. Their arrogant attitude and reckless behavior had backfired in the worst way possible. Their minds raced with panic. Would they lose their jobs? Would they be dragged through disciplinary hearings or, even worse, see their names splashed across the news? Regret clung to them like a heavy fog, and every second felt like a ticking bomb waiting to explode. They had always thought they could get away with things like this, that nobody would notice, or care. But now, they were face to face with a nightmare they had never imagined. The chief had the power to dismantle their careers with a single report. 
and the worst part was, they had handed him all the ammunition he needed. Their behavior was inexcusable, and deep down, they knew it. The younger officer glanced nervously at his partner, desperate for guidance, but the older cop looked just as lost. This wasn't a situation they could talk their way out of. Apologies wouldn't be enough to fix what they had done. They could feel the weight of judgment in every second that passed. It was as if their entire future hung in the balance, and they had no control over what came next. Then, without warning, the chief turned back toward them. His expression was still calm, almost unsettlingly so, as if he had already made up his mind about their fate. The officers braced themselves, expecting the worst, but what happened next was not at all what they had anticipated. The chief looked at them both, his gaze steady and unflinching. I could write you up, he said quietly, his voice carrying the weight of unspoken consequences. I could end your careers today. The words hit them like a hammer, each one heavier than the last. They felt small, exposed, as if standing under a harsh spotlight with nowhere to hide. But then, the chief paused, and what came next took them completely by surprise. Or, he continued, I can give you a chance to reflect. His voice wasn't angry or cold. It was steady, with just a hint of disappointment. And that was somehow worse. The officers blinked, stunned into silence. A chance. They hadn't expected mercy. Not after what they had done. The chief's calm demeanor only deepened the mystery of his intentions, making them uneasy. What kind of man shows restraint in a situation like this? But the chief wasn't finished. Think carefully about how you treat people, he said. Not just today, but every day you wear that badge. There was no threat in his voice, only a quiet, undeniable authority. And in that moment, the officers realized that they were being spared, not because they deserved it, but because the chief was teaching them a lesson they wouldn't forget. The twist was not in their punishment, but in the fact that there wasn't one. At least, not yet. The chief's decision to walk away without filing a complaint was more powerful than any disciplinary action. It left them with something far more difficult to deal with, the burden of guilt, of knowing they had been given a second chance they might not deserve. It was a punishment in itself, forcing them to confront the men they had become and the choices they had made. As the chief got back into his car and drove away, the officers were left standing by the roadside, feeling more exposed than ever. The tension between them was thick, but neither spoke a word. They both knew what the other was thinking. This wasn't just a lucky escape, it was a warning, and it would haunt them for a long time. Every encounter they had from that day forward would be colored by this moment, a constant reminder of how close they had come to losing everything. And as they stood there, watching the chief's car disappear down the road, one thought lingered in both their minds. Next time, they might not be so lucky.